if there's anything I hate about Let's Playing Wii games, it's that in games like this that have a pointer, you can tell how shaky my hands are. Hello, Winternet. Welcome back to another episode of Super Mario Galaxy. In the last episode, we finished off Space Junk Galaxy by doing its Prankster Comet and its Secret Star, uh, which was also our first Prankster Comet. This time, we're going to be heading into Battle Rock Galaxy. I did accidentally unlock all of these off screen, uh, except for the final Bowser level here. So, um, yeah, we've unlocked Battle Rock Galaxy and Rolling Green Galaxy. Battle Rock was technically unlocked first. It doesn't matter. I would, in fact, no, actually, just because this is literally like my least favorite level in the entire game, we're going Rolling Green first. At least, at least the song is playing in an area with a blue sky. Hey now, if you're thinking about just rolling that ball away, you'd better listen to old Billboard here. First, jump to get on top of the ball. Alright, you're on. Now hold waggly thing straight up. Right, that's it. That's what we call the basic position. From that basic position, tilt waggly stick to move the ball in that direction. Then just press A to jump. If anything gets in your way, smush it! Anyway, you'll learn more by doing it yourself. Good luck. This sucks. This is what I meant when I said uh, during Surfing 101 that, yeah, the motion controls get worse. Apparently a lot of people don't find this difficult, including my friend Aiden, who I actually talked to a little bit about this game uh, prior to starting the Let's Play. Uh, he said that surfing is harder than this, which is just, I mean, that's just fundamentally incorrect. Oh god, oh no. So you can just roll over Goombas, you can also jump over them. Same with Micro Goombas, they're the exact same enemies, basically. Uh, and the entire goal is to just not fall off. I'm hoping I can do this in one try. Uh, which, because I said that, obviously, isn't gonna happen. Never mind, it happened. These motion controls haven't been as bad as I remember them being, which kind of hurts to say, because even in my practice run, I kept saying how bad they were to myself. So, you may have noticed that, uh, after the last episode there isn't a star graphic popping up. That's because I realized after making the first 13 that, um, these levels are very linear and it's hard to write down conditions for getting stars for them. So, yeah, I'm just gonna not. Sorry if that's going to remain, like, an inconsistency where the first six episodes have them and then they just kind of go away. In fact, not even- I think it's the first five, actually. Either way. Yeah, I'm sorry about that inconsistency, I just didn't really think about it. I was thinking about keeping it similar to Sunshine, but it really doesn't work for this game. Listen to this music. Yes! Yeah! 
The enemies we encountered on that first planet are called Top Minis and Goom Beetles. Uh, I already talked about the Goom Beetles in post-commentary in the Megalag episode, but I uh, feel like it's still worth saying. These aren't really named enemies as far as I know. These are just spring guys, as I like to call them. So this will start moving after you spin on top of that screw, uh, and there are a ton of star bits along the side of the battle rock that you can pick up with your cursor as well as that a ton of them will also fall on top of this thing. This is another level where it's pretty easy to get a lot of 1-ups, and this is where you'll probably start to see that, yeah, they're very generous with giving out extra lives. Uh, which, you know, they could be less generous if they let you keep lives between saves, but... I mean, beggars can't be choosers, right? Alright, okay, yep. The, the trickiest part about this is just making sure you're not on the same side as the laser gates, and that's not that hard. Okay, I'm not gonna get all of these, but... Oh! God, you can really see that I'm not great at this, because uh, I have to multitask between getting the star bits and avoiding the gates. Uh-oh! Man! That knocked me right around the planet. Oh! Uh-oh, this is looking real bad all of a sudden. Uh, luckily, there's a bunch of micro Goombas here, and they d don't care about my life. I was going to say they drop coins, but it doesn't matter anymore. I can't believe a micro Goomba killed me. We're, we're like, we're 17 stars into the game. This is going to be our 18th, and I was killed by the most basic enemy in the game. which is a smaller version of the most basic enemy in almost every other game. Uh, so you can lure these bullet bills into these cages. Obviously, that's what you have to do to get the star. Uh, but you can also get these coins and star bits. And on top of that... What, two one-ups in one level? I've already made up for the life I lost. And also... <clears throat> Bill, you make me angry, Bill. If you get it into this... You can get even more star bits by breaking that thing. They're very generous, as I've already said multiple times. Uh, is that a 1-up on the bottom side, or is that nothing? It's a 1-up. Yeah, navigating these things around these dishes is a little bit awkward, but still, that's yet another extra life. They're too nice about them. It's actually, like, to some extent, kind of infuriating. Uh, but the goal of the mission is just to draw one of them over here. And just like that, we get ourselves a star. Wahoo! Why do you keep asking? Breaking into the battle rock. Yes. Oh boy, I remember this level. It's not bad. It's this is actually a pretty okay level. Uh, for most of the time. Uh, these are new enemies. These are called bob -ombs. They don't function like they normally do. They don't walk around. They might later in the game, but for now they just kind of stand mobile, and if you spin near them, you pick them up and can throw them like a normal bomb. Uh, 
I should probably start calling them explodey things so YouTube doesn't kill me, but... Yeah, as you can see, because of the gravity, they're a little hard to, hard to aim at the cages, which is what they're meant to be aimed at. There. That, yeah, that's close enough. Uh, but this has got another way to get a ton of star bits, because Nintendo doesn't know when to stop being too generous. I mean, I guess they do, because they stop being too generous as soon as you do anything that's not in one of their games. Yeah, you can't shoot star bits out and make them explode faster, trust me. Uh, that will come... that will come in later to suck. Uh, might want to rephrase, I'm gonna choose not to. Yeah, I'll help you. Just help... help me figure out how to help you. There is a hungry Luma on this planet, I'm not gonna feed it right away because that leads to one of the worst things in this entire game. Oh. Ooh, that was scary. It's my way of thanking you for the help. I'll make a shortcut for you. Transform! Trooper transform. I will, of course, lead you up here. If you don't spin right away, you get rewarded with three coins, which will heal you all the way and more for... They shouldn't reward you with coins in this game if there aren't going to be enough for a one-up in a level, I guess, is my way of thinking, because there aren't a hundred coin shines in this game. There's yet another one up, and we can see there's another one in this maze. That one's a little more, uh, difficult to get, I guess, because, I mean, I can't figure out how to get it. Unless I have to, like, do this, and then, because you can destroy those bombs pretty easily. I guess, like, this, maybe? Okay, that might have just made it easier. Ugh, I am determined to get this now. That's not how I'm gonna do it. I'm a little worried in a second, sorry. That should have done it. There we go, that got it. Yeah, I was just determined to get that because it looked difficult. Uh-oh! Yeah, luckily these don't push you down if you fall, they just damage you. And there was a life shroom in this mess of bombs, so... Whatever, I'll live. It would be a little weird if I didn't live, honestly. Okay, good. Thought I was gonna fall right past it and back to the start again. <laughs> Alright, let's run this planet. I feel weird calling these planets because, like, relative to Earth, which is the only planet I've ever been on, um, they're so small. Like, there could not... Because, like, these entire galaxies are tiny. They're, like, the size of Earth. It's so weird to me. Mostly because, like, the people on each planet, uh, if they're of the same species, or of different ones in some cases, know about each other? I don't know, this- it's weird because it raises questions about how tiny Mario's world is, if it's like compared to all of the planets you visit here. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Uh, but, well that's a spoiler, future me. Oh no that out, with like a really long and drawn out oh no. I have a bad tendency to accidentally spoil things while recording, uh, which luckily I almost always edit out. If you can hit both crystals, both the star, the giant star bit and the, uh, the one in trapping the Luma, you can easily get that uh, launch star to spawn right away. This room is mirrored on both sides, so you have a cannon and uh, ba bombs to free the cannon from a cage. But the goal, uh, no matter what, is just to get to the launch star. There's nothing else to do in there. God, that's some cool scenery. I love the way this game looks. It's just, like, 
this game is displayed in 480i on the Wii and 480p in uh, on the Wii U. Well, 480p on the Wii if you have a an attachment. 480p or 720p on the Wii U, I believe, but it's upscaled. Either way, this game looks so just spectacular no matter what. Even in 480i, this looks good because I first played this on a CRT. Oh boy, I might have missed it. Okay, I didn't. Thank God. And this game came out when I was only six or seven years old, which kind of hurts me to think about because that was like 12 years ago. Yep, 11 or 12. Alright, 19 stars. We're doing great. No thank you. My game is perfectly fine without being saved. We have one more main mission in Battle Route Galaxy to do. <laughs> top Maniac and the Top Man Tribe. We've heard of one top based enemy because we fought a bunch of top minis. And as you can see, you might be dealing with a little more trouble here. These enemies that are over here in these hatches are called Rocky Wrenches. Oh no! And I'm pretty sure this is their first 3D appearance uh, in like a mainline Mario game. Because they were in Mario Brothers 3. That's what they come from. I, I'm, they're basically the same as Monty Mole. So, like, in that sense, they aren't new to 3D Mario because Monty Mole was in 64. The only difference is that they don't come out of holes just to bother you. They come out to throw wrenches at you, which I guess some might call bothersome. If you dislike getting hit with wrenches, which I do personally. I, so yeah, I guess it's just, it is bothersome. What topic did I start on to start asking if getting hit by a wrench is bothersome? These are called amps. They're just smaller versions of the giant electric balls we've been seeing. So yeah, they aren't a threat. This is a short ride on this flying saucer. Oh, there's just as many on the other side. Okay. What is the point of making them have gravity on both sides? Whatever. Alright, this is called a Top Man. If you defeat it, you will unlock the Luma. Thank you! Oh, sweet freedom! I'll show you a shortcut as your reward. And transform! Thank you, hurry on ahead. Uh, so you defeat Top Man by just knocking them into any electric substance or uh, pushing them off a cliff, which isn't possible on that planet. Alright, and over here. I didn't mention Rocky Wrenches are defeated by ground pounding and then jumping on or spinning, uh, spinning them. I didn't mention it because you're, if you're not blind, you can watch. Unless you are blind, in which case, welcome to my video. I'm not ableist. You're just as welcome to these as anybody else. Uh-oh. Okay, this is a gravity area. Uh, why do I keep jumping if it's clearly not working? Okay. So you, you spin those in order to change the flow of gravity. But it's easy to completely cheat this area, and that's what I'm going to be doing here. As you can see, yeah, this, I mean, this is a tricky area. It's just incredibly easy to cheat because of the way the gravity works in this game, which isn't an, which isn't like a complaint. I adore the way this game lets you cheat everything uh, because this is definitely one of the best designed Mario games in terms of like speed running. If you watch a speed run of this game or its sequel, it's insane, the things they do. They, like, skip the majority of Honey Hive Galaxy by doing wall jumps up the tree to get to Captain Toad. It's insanity. Long have I waited. Uh-oh, whoa, okay, that switched the gravity. A couple top men here. Lower that, or I guess raise that gate. I shouldn't have killed them, I just missed a star bit or two. Whatever. 
got that coin on accident. I don't think that was supposed to be there, but... Man, every time we come here, there's just more and more being destroyed. Uh, okay, top man, whatever you want. Just stop being annoying, please. Are, are these smaller than the ones we just fought? These look like top minis. Oh no! It's probably because of the change in the camera, though. Future me, if they are different enemies, you know what to do. But I don't think they are. But if we look up, there is some kind of flying saucer up there, and we could not hit it if we tried. Okay, let's head around, though, because there is someone I want to show. If you head over here... Luma Lee, Luma Bop, welcome to the Luma Shop. I can sell you something helpful for only 30 star bits. I want to buy. So you a life shroom. Unfortunately, in Mario Galaxy, if you have full health and a life shroom and collect a life shroom, it does nothing. In Galaxy 2, it gives you a one-up. But since I already said yes to buying something and we can't back out, we might as well buy a one-up since the life shroom won't give us one. You don't have to point at the screen or anything. It will always fill up automatically so you don't cheat him. And there we go. All right, let's go. This is Top Maniac. As you can see, starting off the fight, he spawns top minis almost immediately. Uh, you just want to jump on his head and then... <sighs> okay, yeah, I'm going to take care of these top minis because they are going to cause me some problems. Want to jump on his head. If he touches you, he spins you. And then spin him uh, right into the wall. Okay. He only starts charging, I believe, after the top minis have been defeated, so he won't be causing that much trouble. On the final phase, he will spawn Top Man. Top Man. I, I don't know what the plural of Top Man is. There we go. Didn't even have to beat the Top Mans. I'm gonna call him Top Mans, just because that annoys the heck out of me. Now that we have all those, there's a Daredevil Comet in orbit and a Secret Star in Battle Rock Galaxy. But this episode's already going on for quite a while, and I've actually made a decision regarding Comets and Secret Stars. I will be doing Comets and Secret Stars for levels after doing the Bowser level of each dome. This will do something that will affect our progress because we're going to be way ahead of what the game expects. Uh, but, I don't know, it's just easier to organize that way. So next time on Super Mario Galaxy, we'll be heading to Hurry Scurry Galaxy, and then to whatever this is. See you guys then.